Here are the 8 simple steps on how to edit videos using Adobe Premiere Pro from start to finish. Step number 1. Importing your footage into Premiere Pro. To transfer your assets into Premiere Pro, just click on File at the top, then select Import, and choose the folder or video files from wherever they stored in your computer. Then once you selected all your videos, click on Import. Or a quick way, you can also drag and drop this folder directly into your project panel, then release it like that. Now it's already imported inside project panel. Now think of this step as gathering all your ingredients before you start cooking. Next is step number two, creating a sequence and settings. Now that we have our ingredients, let's make Premiere Pro ready for editing. First, create a new sequence. Well, what is a sequence? Well, a sequence is a timeline where you arrange and edit your video clips to create your final project. To create a new sequence, start by clicking on the file at the top, then select new, then choose sequence. We normally use HD 1080p 23 frames per second. Then you can type a sequence name here, in this case, demo, and then click on OK. Next, locate all the videos you want to edit in your folder within the project panel. Then, all you have to do is to select them. So in this case, we go to footage and we can choose the video that we want to edit. In this case, we choose B-roll 01, hold down the shift key and choose B-roll 06 to highlight them all. Then, simply drag and drop these selected videos into sequence timeline. Premiere Pro will intelligently detect the settings of your first video clip and create a sequence to match automatically. When you drag all the videos to your empty timeline for the first time, you will be prompted to choose whether you change or keep the existing sequence settings. The best choice here is to click on keep existing settings because this ensures that your sequence matches the properties of your video clips, maintaining consistency and avoiding potential issues with mismatch settings. This is the quickest options and usually works well. It is very important because it ensures that your sequence settings match the settings of your video clips, which helps prevent compatibility issues and ensure a smooth playback and editing. For example, if your first video clip is shot in 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second, Premiere Pro will create a sequence with the same resolution and frame rate. This ensures that all subsequent clips you add to the sequence will seamlessly integrate with the existing footage, maintaining consistency throughout your project. Once you're all set and have all your footage in the timeline, you can click the play button in the program monitor to preview your video directly from the timeline. So to do that, just click on this play button. Alternatively, you can simply press the space bar on your keyboard to start and stop the playback. This allows you to quickly review your edits and ensure everything looks just right before proceeding further with your project. Now, let's move on to step number three, cut, trim, arrange video clips. With our sequence setup, it's time to start shaping our story by cutting, trimming, and arranging your video clips. Think of it like sculpting clay to create a perfect sculpture, but with video. But before we start cutting and arranging our video clips, let's plan out our editing. You can write down the goal and the purpose of your final video or you can even draw your plan to see it visually. Think about the vibe of your video. Will it be fast or slow? Also, consider the music and if you'll cut to the beat. Planning sets the tone for your edit and make sure everything flows well. Now, to keep things organized and avoid getting lost, we'll use color labels. To label your clips, just right click and choose label, then choose color. Let's see how labels can make editing smoother and bring our vision to life. For example, I label the B-roll footage 01, the wide shot, with forest. Then B-roll 02 with lavender. B-roll 03 with cerulean. And so on. This helps us easily spot each type of shot. 
Planning our edits, organizing footage with color labels, and using keyboard shortcuts are all important for faster editing. Now, let's move on to the basic skill of cutting video clips. Are you ready to learn how to chop up your footage to tell your story? Let's go! So how can we cut a video clip? Well, we need to use the razor tool. Find the toolbar panel, usually located on the left side of the screen. Look for the icon that looks like a razor blade to activate it. So here is the razor blade. Click on the razor tool icon. You can also press the C key on your keyboard to quickly activate the razor tool. Once you're selected the razor tool, you're ready to cut a video. So move the razor tool along the timeline where you want to make a cut. Click on the timeline at the desired point to cut a clip into smaller segments. Cut here and cut here. Once you made cuts in your video, you'll have several smaller clips that you can rearrange or remove. But how do you select these smaller clips to move them around or delete them? Well, it's quite simple. Just use the selection tool. Find the selection tool in the toolbar or press the V key on your keyboard to quickly switch to the selection tool. To do that, just click on this icon. This is the selection tool icon. To move segments, click and drag the smaller segments of the clip to rearrange or remove them as needed. Simply click on the clip you want to work with in the timeline, then you can drag it to a new position or press the delete key on your keyboard to remove it. Easy, right? But what if it creates a gap between the video clips? How can we close this gap? If the gap between the video clips occurs, don't worry, it's easily fixable. You can close the gap by dragging the adjacent clip together until they meet, effectively closing the space. Or you can use the Ripple Edit tool, which automatically closes the gap when you cut clips, ensuring a seamless transition between them. Ripple Trim Edit allows you to quickly trim clips to your playhead position and automatically close the gap, making your editing process even faster. You can trim the beginning of the clip and you can trim the end of the clip too. To trim the start of the clip to quickly activate it, the clip will be trimmed from the beginning up to the playhead position and the gap will automatically closed. You can also trim the end and close the gap automatically. To do that, move your playhead to the point where you want the clip to end. Ensure that the track is selected and highlighted in blue. Then press the letter W on your keyboard and the clip will be trimmed from the playhead position to the end and the gap will automatically closed. Remember, you'll be using this tool most frequently. The razor tool is perfect for cutting clips into smaller segments. Simply press the letter C to activate it. And if you need to move or rearrange segments, the selection tool is your go-to. Just hit V on the keyboard to use it. Here is a neat trick I often use, the add edit tool. I've set it to a keyboard shortcut number two for a quick access. When I press this shortcut, it cuts everything at my playhead in the timeline, including audio, graphics, and all layers. Instead of cutting this one by one, like this, I press number two and it cuts all at once. Save me a lot of time when editing. And one more thing, let's also cover the Ripple Delete tool, which is incredibly useful for quickly removing gaps in your timeline. I've set my keyboard shortcut to E for easy access. And it's also intentional that I've set up keyboard shortcuts like Q, W, E, and 2 close to each other. These arrangements allows for seamless editing and easy reach with just your left hand. To perform a ripple delete, simply select the segment you want to delete, then press E on your keyboard. This action will remove the selected segment and automatically close 
any resulting gaps in your timeline, keeping your edit smooth and efficient. If you want to set up your keyboard shortcuts, follow these steps. Click on Premiere Pro in the top menu, then select Keyboard Shortcuts. A window will pop up where you can customize your shortcuts. Click on the search bar to find Add Edit or Repo Delete. Click on Add Edit Tool. Click on each to highlight them, then click on the empty space next to them to create a box. Now press the keys you want to assign as shortcuts. In this case, for Add Edit, I want to press number 2 on my keyboard. Then for Ripple Delete, choose it, highlight it, and then an E for Ripple Delete tool on your keyboard. Finally, click OK to save your changes. Now whenever you press number 2 or E, while editing, it will activate the respective tools, allowing for efficient editing with just your left hand. By mastering these tools and shortcuts, you can efficiently trim and cut your video clips, ensuring a smooth and seamless editing process. Remember that trimming and cutting is like sculpting clay to create the perfect sculpture, except our medium is video. All right, let's quickly recap what you've learned about keyboard shortcuts for efficient editing. First, we have Q and W for Ripple Trim Edit, allowing you to trim your clips quickly without leaving any gaps in your timeline. Watch how I press Q to trim the start of the clip and W to trim the end seamlessly. Next, we have E for Ripple Delete which swiftly removes segments from our timeline while automatically closing any gaps. See how I press E to delete this segment effortlessly. Lastly, we have 2 for Add Edit Tool, enabling us to split clips with ease. Make sure to highlight it. Just press 2 to create a cut wherever your playhead is positioned. And there you have it. By mastering these keyboard shortcuts, you can edit your videos faster and more efficient than ever before. Now let's move on to step number four, adding transition and some effects. So how do I make my video change from one part to another smoothly? Well, let's move out those cuts with transition effects to make your video change from one part to another smoothly. Here's how you can do it. First, access the Effects panel. Click on the window at the top, then select Effects. Then, the Effects panel will appear, displaying a wide range of effects you can use in your project. Second, find the transition you want. Use the search bar here at the top of the Effects panel to find the transition you want to use. For example, you can search for Film, Dissolve, or you can search for Wipe. To find different types of transitions, simply click and drag the transition onto the timeline. For example, we choose wipe and then simply click and drag it to the timeline, positioning it between two clips where you want the transition to happen. Third, adjust the duration. Once the transition is on the timeline, you can adjust its duration to make it longer or shorter. Just hover your cursor over the edge of the transition until you see this icon. Simply click and drag the edge of the transition to the left or right to adjust its duration. Then preview the transition by playing through the timeline to ensure it flows smoothly between the clips. Fourth, add speed effects. Now, let's make some parts of your video play in slow motion or speed up for added impact. If you're shot, your viral footage at 60 frames per second, or also known as FPS, you can create smooth slow motion effects by changing the speed to 50% or lower. Conversely, if you want to speed up certain parts, adjusting the speed to 200% or higher will create a fast motion effects. Remember, the difference between 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second footage is important when changing the speed. Footage shot at 60 frames per second offers smoother, slow motion effects compared to 30 FPS footage. To add a slow motion effect, highlight it, right click on it, then choose speed and duration, then you can choose 50%. To make a smooth slow motion, click OK 
and then once you play it, it's going to be a slow motion effects. Conversely, if you highlight it, right click, choose speed duration and make it 200%, click OK, and it will create the fast motion effects. Fifth, check clip details. Before you proceed, it's helpful to check the details of your clips, such as frame rate or FPS. To do this, simply right click and select media file properties. Here, you can see important information like FPS, resolution, and duration. By adding transition between your clips and adjusting the speed of certain parts, you can create a more polished and professional looking video. Experiment with different types of transition and speed effects to find the ones that best suit your project style and tone. Sixth, add stabilization. Another important effect to consider is stabilization. Removing camera shake or jitter from your footage helps to create smoother and more professional looking videos. To apply this stabilization, we need to use an effect named Warp Stabilizer Effect. First, select the clip on the timeline that you want to stabilize. Then, go to Effects Panel by clicking on the window at the top, click on Effects. Here are the Effects Panel, right here. In the search bar, type Warp Stabilizer. Once located, click and drag the Warp Stabilizer effect onto the clip on the timeline. After applying the effect, Premiere Pro will analyze the clip and stabilize it automatically. You can monitor the progress of the stabilization process in the Effects Control Panel typically located on the left side of the screen. Once stabilization is complete, you can adjust the settings of the warp stabilizer effect in the effects control panel to fine tune the stabilization settings if needed. Then preview the stabilized clip by playing through the timeline to ensure that the camera shake or jitter has been effectively removed, resulting in a smoother and more professional looking video. Now let's move on to step number five, improving your audio. Great visuals are important, but don't forget about the audio. Let's make sure your video sounds as good as it looks. Here's how you can improve your audio quality in Premiere Pro. Let's improve and balance your audio in Adobe Premiere Pro using few simple steps. These will make your audio sound clear and professional. The audio meter shows the volume levels of your audio. It uses decibel to measure loudness. Decibels are a unit that indicates how loud your audio is. Using the audio meter when editing audio is important because it's hard to tell how loud or quiet the sound is just by listening. The audio meter helps us be precise and make sure our video sounds good for viewers. In Premiere Pro, you'll find the audio meter on the right side of the screen. It looks like a vertical bar that moves up and down as your audio plays. 0 dB represent the maximum level before distortion occurs. It's important to keep your audio levels below 0 dB to avoid distortion and ensure clear, high quality sound in your videos. Ideally, your audio should peak between negative 6 dB or negative 3 dB or decibels. This range is recommended because it ensures your audio is loud enough to hear clearly without distorting. We'll start by tagging the audio in the Essential Sound panel, which helps Premiere Pro identify the type of audio you're working with. Open the Essential Sound panel by going to Window on the top menu and selecting the Essential Sound. Once open, select the audio clip in the timeline and click on Dialog in the Essential Sound panel. Tagging your audio as Dialog helps Premiere Pro apply appropriate settings and effects designed specifically for spoken word. Next, we need to adjust the gain to set your audio levels at the good starting point. Right click on your audio clip and select audio gain or just press the letter G on your keyboard to use the shortcut. A window will pop up where you can adjust the gain by entering a value. Aim for peak levels between negative 6 and negative 3 decibels. This will ensure your audio is not too quiet or too loud before you make other adjustments. Keep adjusting the audio gain until the peak level of your dialogue sound is in the negative 6 decibel 
to negative 3 decibel range on the audio meter. So let's keep on adjusting it. Click on set gain, adjust it to let's say number 1. Click OK. Let's play it. It's on negative 12 and then adjust it again. One more time. Let's go to 10. Click OK and then let's play it. It's reaching about negative 6. Another one. Let's go to 14. Click OK. It's reaching around negative 6 to negative 3 peak levels. And I'm happy with this audio meter. After setting the gain, we move on to reducing background noise. In the essential sound panel, find the Reaper section and enable the reduce noise option by clicking the checkbox next to it. Adjust the amount slider to reduce the background noise. Start with the moderate settings and increase it as needed until the unwanted noise is minimized. Reducing noise is crucial to make sure the spoken content is clear and easy to understand without distractions. Now, let's balance the audio using dynamic processing. In the Essential Sound panel, under the Clarity section, enable Dynamics by clicking the checkbox. Dynamic processing helps even out the volume by making quieter parts louder and the louder parts quieter, ensuring more consistent audio level throughout your clip. This step is essential for maintaining a balanced and professional sound. Finally, we normalize the audio to ensure consistent levels across your entire clip. Select your audio clip again, right click and choose audio gain. This time select normalize max peak and set the level to negative 3 or your desired peak level. Then click OK. Normalization ensures that all parts of your audio reach the same maximum level preventing sudden jumps or drops in volume. By following these steps, you'll achieve clean, balanced, and professional sounding audio for your video projects. Remember, all the resources, footage, and audio you need are available for download in the resources tab of this course. So you can practice and even apply these techniques right away. Next, let's move on to step number six, color correcting and color grading. So how do we adjust the colors in our video? Well, let's make those colors pop. Here's how you can adjust the colors in your video. First, open Lumetri Color Panel. To start, we need to open the Lumetri Color Panel. It's like our control center for adjusting colors. You can find it by going to Color Workspace. Just click on Window in the top menu, then pick Workspace, then click on Color. The Lumetri Color Panel will pop up on the right side of your screen. Next, correct white balance. Now, let's fix any color problems. We'll start by adjusting the white balance. This makes sure that the colors in our video look natural. In the Lumetri color panel, look for the sliders called temperature and tint. Select the clip in the Lumetri color panel, choose basic correction, then look for temperature and tint. Temperature controls warmth or coolness, while tint adjusts green or magenta. Just click and drag these sliders until the colors look right. Then adjust exposure. Next, let's fix how bright or dark our video looks. This is called exposure. In the Lumetri color panel, find the exposure slider. Drag it to the left or to the right until the video looks just right. Not too dark or too bright. Then try color grading. Now that our colors are fixed, let's make our video look cool. This is called color grading. One popular look is the teal and orange style. To do this, use the color wheels section in the Lumetri color panel. Adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights to boost blues and orange. To do this, use the color wheels and match section. Adjust the shadows to blue. Adjust the midtones. To orange and adjust the highlights to blues and you will have the teal and orange style then check the preview as we made changes keep an eye on the video preview this shows how our adjustments affect the whole video if you're unsure you can turn the Lumetri color panel off and on to compare the before and after so off or on 
to compare the before and after. You can also try additional color adjustments. Now, let's get creative. Experiment with options like saturation and creative LUTs available in the Lumetri color panel. Saturation controls how intense the colors are. Creative LUTs are like magic color filters that instantly change the mood or style of your video. Whether you want to correct any color imbalances or give your video a stylish look, the options are endless in Lumetri color panel. Experiment with different settings until you achieve the desired look for your video. Then apply changes and continue editing. Once you're happy with the color, you can continue with your editing process. With these extra tools, you can give your video that extra pop and style. Now let's move on to step 7, adding titles and graphics. So can we add titles or text to our video? Well, absolutely. It's time to add some flair to your video with titles and graphics. Premiere Pro makes it easy to create professional looking text overlays and graphic elements. Here's how you can do it. First, access the graphics workspace. Click on the window at the top, then select workspace, then click on caption and graphics. This will switch your workspace layout to the graphics panel. Now, we can choose your titles. In the graphics panel, you'll find variety of title templates to choose from. You can even go to Essential Graphics, click on Browse, and click on Adobe Stock, and click on the Free option, and you can find all the free graphics here. Just go to the next page, and you can find everything here. It's all for free. Once you're decided, simply drag and drop it to your timeline. You'll find variety of titles templates to choose from. You can place titles above your video clips to overlay them or create a separate title sequences. Then you can customize your titles. Select the title template or create a new one. Use the tools in the graphics panel to customize the text, font, size, color, and other attributes. For example, you can choose the font styles like here or enter your text here. Change the font style here. You can change the size here and a lot of attributions here. And you can also change the text color here by clicking on this box and then choose the color, drag it somewhere here to change the color and then here to fine tune the color and click OK and that's it. Then you can preview your title in the program monitor. Play through your timeline to preview how the titles look with your video footage. Make any necessary adjustments until you're satisfied with the overall appearance. Remember, adding titles and graphics is a great way to enhance your video and convey important information to your audience. Whether you're creating a cinematic intro sequence or adding lower thirds for identifying speakers, Premiere Pro will provide all the tools you need to make your titles pop. So another example here is the cinematic title right here. You can, if you want this, just simply click and drag it to your timeline and you'll have cinematic titles just like that. Starting to make it full screen and let's see. All right, create a dynamic here. and cinematic title right there. Now let's move on to step number eight, saving and exporting. So how do you save your project in Adobe Premiere Pro? Well, it's very easy. To save your work in Adobe Premiere Pro, you can go to file at the top and choose save or go to file at the top and choose save as and choose the location where you want to save it. Then click save. If you want to know the shortcut, just press Control S for Windows or Command S for Mac computer. Remember to make sure to save regularly to avoid losing any progress. Now, how do you share or export your finished video so others can watch it? Well, to export our masterpiece, click on File at the top, click on Export, then click on Media. This will open the export settings window. Choose the desired export settings, such as the format, the resolution, 
and the bitrate in the export settings window. You can also specify the destination folder where you want to save the exported video here. Whether you're uploading to YouTube, sharing on social media, or burning to a DVD, Premiere Pro has you covered with a wide range of export option. If you need more presets, just click on more presets here. And you can choose the variety of formats here. Premiere Pro has you covered with wide range of export options. For example, if you're exporting for YouTube, you can choose high quality 1080p HD with a format of H.264 format with a frame rate of 30 frames per second. Simply click export at the bottom of the export settings window to start the export process. There you go, it's starting the export process. Then Premiere Pro will render and save your video according to the selected settings. After clicking export, Premiere Pro will begin creating or rendering your video file. You can monitor the progress of the export in the export window, which will show you an estimated time remaining when you click on export. It's like telling the Premiere Pro to finish all the edits you've made and turn them into an actual final video that you can watch. This process is called rendering which means the software is putting everything together to make the final video file like mp4. Once the export is complete, you can find the exported video in the destination folder you set earlier. By following these steps, you can save and export your project with confidence, knowing that your hard work will be preserved and shared with others. And there you have it. 8 simple steps to edit a video in Adobe Premiere Pro from start to finish. Now you know how to import footage, create a sequence, cut, trim, and arrange your video clips. You've also learned how to improve your audio, correct color, and color grade your footage. And finally, how to save and export your final video. Well done! Each step has provided essential skills for video editing in Premiere Pro, making this course engaging and accessible with clear explanation and easy to follow instructions. Remember, whatever happens, if you feel confused or a bit overwhelmed, just stick to the proven system and trust the 8-step process. As you progress, you'll discover your own techniques and improve your workflow refining this system to suit your needs.